All right, guys, welcome to part four of making an antique gumball machine in Blender. So here's where we left off last time. And we just made this faceplate, which fits our model. And we <laughs> made some last minute adjustments to get this uh, kind of extrusion from the gumball machine to line up with the face. And now it's time to actually make this coin mechanism. Now I will use a image reference for this, but only for this. And you'll see why, because I'm actually going to do a kind of sneaky way of making this, uh, something that a lot of people probably wouldn't think to do, but it will actually end up making a very nice geometry. Uh, some people would think maybe you should use booleans to kind of cut this shape out or merge this shape in, or maybe make this shape and have it be intersecting. Um, but I'm going to try to make this one continuous surface, but I'm going to do it in a way that you might not expect. So I'm going to um, hide our gumball machine layer, create a new collection, and for now we'll just call it reference. I'm going to go to my front view and drag and drop this one in. And so now we have this image plane, and I don't really care where it is because I'm just going to use it temporarily and then delete it. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to add some circles in. Um, select everything, rotate on X, and we're just going to try to make circles that match this shape. Go back to my median point scaling because I was still scaling around the cursor. And you know, the image is not going to be perfect, so we'll just have to do our best. I'm going to duplicate this one, grab on Z, and bring it up until it matches this curve up here. Duplicate scale until it matches this inside circle. And I feel like, you know, uh, I scaled it, but now there's a little bit of a gap up here. I want these to be centered around each other, so I'm going to select both and grab them both up and do it like that. So they're a little bit more centered. And then what we can do is just probably delete. Whoops, I keep using the scale or the zoom, I mean, instead of the box select. And like I said in the last video, I'm still using a lot of shortcuts from Blender 2.8 because my brain has, uh, you know, years and years and years of experience with that, and it's hard to break. So let's um, delete these, select all of these. We can just delete those, select all of these, and delete those. And let's just connect that. Delete that extra stray vertice. Um, let's select just this top half. And we can see that uh, these aren't quite straight. So I'm just going to scale this part in just a little bit so that those are straight now. And I guess we'll do one more. We'll select this circle, duplicate it, bring it down, and scale so that it looks like that. And actually, I'm going to scale it to be about the same size as this one, just so that they're um, centered. And then I'm going to bring this down to about there, because there is some perspective on this picture. And I want this part to be centered in the actual mechanism. And that's it. That's all we're going to do. Now I'm going to delete this image reference. And I'm going to leave just this outline. And we're going to use this as a reference. So when I bring back the gumball machine, um, I'm going to bring this up to about there and we're going to figure out where we want to place it. Now, um, it gets very close to the top of this front panel, but there's a pretty good gap at the bottom. So I'm going to try to recreate that. So let's first grab this thing. Um, this should be centered and it's not right now. So let's go fix that. I'm going to select all of these vertices, hit shift S to put my cursor to selected. Then I'm going to right click on this object and say set origin to 3D cursor. Then with this object still selected, I'm going to make its X location zero. So now they are centered. All right, and then we want to bring this up so that it's pretty close to the top, but still has a pretty big gap on the bottom. I feel like I want to make it a little bit smaller um, because these gaps should be a little bit bigger. 
And again, this is just kind of eyeballing it, so I feel like that should be pretty good for what we want to do. I'm going to hide this uh, red base for now because we want to work with just this. And what I'm going to do might surprise you, but we're going to try to recreate this shape um, using our already complicated object. But let's see how far we can get here. So I'm going to put an edge loop here that's basically right at the center of this outer curve. I'm going to put an edge loop that's right here at the bottom. And then using these existing vertices we already have, I'm just going to bring them up and over until they kind of match where we want on this curve. Um, we'll also want an edge loop for this little corner area, probably one for right where it starts the curve, probably one for right at the top. Um, and we'll add more or less as we go. Uh, one thing that's kind of bothering me is that these are very close to each other. Um, and, you know, the reason why they're very close to each other is for this piece down here at the bottom. But we don't actually need them to be that close to each other. Uh, we only really need them to be that close for this piece. So I'm going to select all of these all the way to the top, including these very tip top ones, actually. All the way to this side. Basically that whole edge loop, except for the bottom part. And I'm just going to slide that over to maybe about here. And I'm going to do the same thing with this edge loop. So I'll select the whole thing. Actually, I'll go to um, X-ray, circle select, and deselect just the bottom bits. And then slide those there. And I could probably even do the same thing again with this one, um, just to kind of space it out even more. Actually, no, you know what? I like it right here because it lines up with this edge. So that'll be important later. OK, so now I'm going to take these and just basically, I guess I'll just take the whole line for now, bring it up until it matches that curve, and then deselect just that one, and just try to recreate this curve. Now, in, in the case of this one, um, we really can't get any closer to the curve. But with this one, we can still take this edge loop. And just like we did with the others, um, deselect the ones on the bottom. And I'm going to just move this in until that matches right there. And then this one, I'll just move kind of basically by eye. And it's okay if you have a little bit of a bend there. It's not the end of the world. So now we'll do the same thing with these guys. Select the whole thing. Bring that down. And maybe we'll bring that down to there. And then, you know, this guy we can just move over a little bit. It's okay if there's a little bit of bending. Um, same thing with this. Bring that so that one's lined up there. And then maybe with this one, we'll do the same thing there. Um, and then, you know, uh, just to make the, the lines look a little bit prettier, I'll put my cursor there, go into cursor scaling mode, select these ones, and scale x to 0. So, you know, a line goes straight up from there. And I guess we can do the same thing with this. Oops. Cursor to selected. We'll move these ones to be in line with that. And we'll do the same thing, I guess, with these guys as well. So scale Z down. And might as well do it here as well. <laughs> I'm just like making up um, decisions, but you'll see why. Uh, so we'll just do that. And so what's cool about this is we're starting to create this curve but we still have all of these original edge loops and they all still look pretty straight. So now what we're going to do is take those faces we just created and just extrude them. So let's go to the side view. We're going to hit extrude, right click to let go. 
then grab on Y and move it just a tiny bit. Then we're going to extrude again. And extrude one more time. All right. I'm going to temporarily hide our guide. And you can see that we've created that shape that we want for this piece um, out of the edge loops we already had. And it, you know, it looks like it works pretty well. Uh, the only thing that I can really see that I want to do is add another edge loop right here so that we tighten that, that corner. Uh, but I'm going to scale Z zero and just bring it here. So we have an edge loop that goes straight across, but tightens that corner there. Now <clears throat> we want to do the inside loop for right here um, and the inside uh, where this little, um, I don't know what you'd call it, raised area is for the crank mechanism. Now these edge loops that we have uh, aren't too conducive to that. We could probably do better. Um, and so I'm going to try something here. I'm going to save before we go too far. Um, and I'm going to delete these inside faces because I think we can do better. Well, actually, we're going to do we're going to delete them, but we're going to do one thing first. So let's uh, go into face mode, select all of these faces again. All right, and then from front view, we're going to hit I for inset and just bring that in a little bit. And you can see that creates a ring of faces that goes all the way around the outside. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to delete just these faces. Oops, faces. Uh, we're going to take these edges. Oops, there we go. And grab on X until they snap in the middle. And the reason why they snap is because we have a mirror modifier set to X with clipping on um, and with merge on. So if you don't have clipping, you can actually go past the middle. But if you have clipping on, you can't go past the middle and they will merge automatically. Um, so now uh, we can plan on how we want to create the other bits of this. So I'm going to delete, uh, let's go into face mode. I'm going to delete these faces, but not these edges. And I'm going to take these edge loops right here. I'm going to hit extrude. I'm going to scale them down a bit. Oh, we're going to turn on um, medium point scaling. And we're going to recreate that circle in the middle. So let's bring back our guide, go to front view. And I actually should have been, hold on, let me redo this. I should have been in front view for that. I wasn't. Let's redo that. Um, bring back our guide. Is this, I want to be, there we go. So extrude these, scale these a bit with median scaling. And just basically we're gonna try to recreate this circle here, so. Scale X, and of course we'll probably have to move, you know, some of the vertices by hand so let's go and do that vertex mode. I'm just going to take these vertices and put them on the edge of our reference circle. Try to evenly space them a little bit. And there we go. So, you know, they're not perfectly even spaced, but the subdivision smoothing uh, surfacing will take that into account and kind of um, make it a lot smoother for us. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And I think that looks that looks really good. Um, so now we'll do an extrusion. So we'll go to the side view, extrude, right click to let go, grab on Y just a tiny bit, extrude again with Y, make it just a little bit smaller so that it tapers, extrude again. This time <clears throat> we're gonna, uh, we have to do a couple things. Uh, I'm actually gonna undo that extrusion. I'm gonna put my cursor, or I'm gonna select this one, select this one, and then cursor to selected so my cursor is in the center. Make sure we're scaling around 3D cursor. 
Then I'm going to select this extrude, right click to cancel, but then I'm going to scale in just a tiny bit. And we're scaling around the cursor, so I'm going to do that again, extrude scale, and that'll be good. I'm not going to fill this in and make an evil end gone because um, we don't need this to be an end gone. Um, we're actually going to cover it up with this mechanism, so for now, this is fine. I guess what I could do is just scale to zero. Um, I'll put another edge loop in there just so we have a nice ring of uh, quads around there. And there is that mechanism. It looks a little bit oval. Um, even though the, the circle looks perfect, uh, the actual object looks a little bit oval. Maybe that's because these ones should go a little bit more this way. Maybe scale these up a bit. Or maybe just take the whole thing and scale it in on X a bit. All right, that looks pretty good. And finally, we just need to make this circle at the top for where the coin goes. So um, right here, make it kind of deep and then also make a little cut for it to fall into. And we're actually doing pretty good on this video. We're only 16 minutes in and we've only made one mistake, which I just see right now. I must have scaled something that I shouldn't have. Um, I must have had these selected while I was doing some scaling, but that can be easily fixed. So by now you should know the drill. We'll put our cursor to, whoops, our cursor to there, select this one and this one and with our cursor scaling mode, we'll scale Z zero. Same thing here. Oops, I keep doing the wrong one. Actually, I could probably just do all of these right now because they should all be flat. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes you, uh, you make changes uh, when you have something selected off screen, like you're working over here, like like these will be selected, but then you're working over here and you think you have nothing selected and then you'll scale or something and you'll mess up something way, way far off screen. But we put that fire out. <laughs> Everything else is looking good so far. Uh, there are some mistakes I intentionally made, like uh, this is no longer a perfect curve up here. I knew that was happening as we were going. Uh, basically when I was uh, shifting these vertical lines. Oh, look, I made the same mistake down here as well. When I was uh, shifting these vertical lines, um, I knew that it'd be messing up the backside, but uh, I, I knew that I'd also be fixing that later. So it looks like I did the same mistake here as well. So we'll go and fix that as well. These two can probably be at the same height. Whoops. Cursor just selected. I really miss, you know, I'm trying to be as optimistic as possible about Blender 2.8, but I still really miss some of the 2.7 shortcuts. I realize they were a lot more complicated and this is a lot more easy for beginners to learn, but uh, I don't know. I just, I don't like pie menus because I keep messing up. I keep, before it was a regular menu when you do shift S and it would stick to whatever one you did last, but this time I'm always at the center of the menu, so I have to move my mouse. And what I end up doing a lot of time is getting to the menu and clicking, but it doesn't do anything. Um, whereas an old blender that would have done something. So my muscle memory is still set to the old shortcuts and it's very frustrating. Um, let's isolate this because something else is messed up over here. What's going on? This one. There we go. Okay, hopefully it's the last fire I have to put out for this. Nope, it still looks a little bit, a little bit wonky. What's going on here? Yeah. Let's put the cursor here. These ones need to go, or probably just this one. Where is that one? This one. Okay. Wow, this is a very professional tutorial series. I make a bunch of mistakes and then I have to fix them. Okay, hopefully that is the last fire we have to put out for now.
Well, you're getting a very realistic uh, tutorial. This is what happens when you're modeling. You make mistakes and then you fix them. Nobody ever models anything perfectly on the first try, and I'm certainly no exception. So um, uh, onward we push. All right, so um, I took a break there because someone is asking for my help and I had to um, help them. But uh, let's push forwards and try to get this circle area made so that we can cut it out and create the circle for the coin mechanism. Um, so I'm gonna delete some of the stuff that we don't need, which are basically these three vertices. Uh, and then I'm just gonna move these down until they match the, um, the outer ring of that circle. And in some cases, I'll just, you know, move them by hand. I don't necessarily have to move them um, in a um, linear, you know, motion. And it's okay, because for this um, topology, like, I mean, it's already pretty good. So, you know, there's some weird stuff going on here. You could argue about the best way to do this. Um, I might actually use my knife tool here to connect these two and then go into edge mode and dissolve this edge because I like the idea of that face and this face kind of running into each other. Although now <coughs> I've created an end gone, haven't I? So, because this one actually has five sides. So let's actually undo that. I don't like having end gons ever. Um, but I don't like the fact that this is um, concave. We should You should avoid that. Um, so I might just make this a triangle anyways. And then just live with that being a triangle. Because um, it's better than having this be concave. And by concave, I mean like, you know, you have a quad. You know, if this edge wasn't here, it'd be a quad. But it would be a quad where this, you know, piece goes into itself, which is bad geometry. You want to avoid that. So, um, yeah, if I didn't have this edge right here, I could have made that a quad. But... Whatever, we're doing fine. So um, it looks like we more or less have that working now. And I just want to evenly space these out so it looks a little bit better. So since we have more vertices on the bottom, I can afford to kind of space them out more. So if we go to edge mode in wireframe, each one of these should be roughly about the same size. Um, looks like these top two are a little bit too big. So let's, um, I mean, top and bottom are a little bit too big. So let's spread those out a little bit. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So now we're going to just take these, um, extrude, let go, grab on Y and bring it just a little bit in, extrude again on Y and bring it in pretty deep. And then we will turn on X-ray. We're going to choose this vertice, this vertice, uh, and we will hit Shift S and put the cursor in the middle of them. Make sure we're on cursor scaling. Select this, extrude, and then just scale in just a tiny bit. And then extrude and scale a lot. And extrude and scale and hit zero. So now we have that cavity. And the reason why we're doing like these um, like tiny little extrusions is, which mode do I want? When we do like these like super narrow extrusions is because if we didn't do those, if we just um, uh, go into x-ray edge mode and just for now I'll dissolve those edges you can see it's you know curved in there and so when I'm doing my extruding I'm basically planning on how the subdivision surface is going to to work so that's basically the same as putting an edge loop in there to tighten it um, and make it look nice and I could probably tighten it like that in that direction as well so now we're done with this little um, template it served us well uh, but we can delete that now. And just like that, uh, we've made a rather complex object um, 
with a rather complex topology. I mean, look at all the stuff that's going on here. You have this little base piece, which comes out and wraps around this part of the gumball machine and looks fancy. You have this top piece, which curves around the top. It's bent. It's like a bent uh, right angle piece of metal. And it even has this relief um, coin mechanism in there, as well as a slot for the coin. We still have a little bit more work to do, but this is a rather complex piece of geometry. And if we go into wireframe mode, you know, even if just one level of subsurface, this is what it looks like. But this is a good topology. Um, if you had used Booleans to recreate this, you would have made very ugly um, geometry that would not have looked well, would not have rendered well. You'd have artifacts at all the little corners. But because we did it this way, um, let's go back to solid mode. Um, everything, even, you know, if we turn off the subdivision surface altogether, um, it's going to look horrible. But with just one level, it looks pretty good. And with two levels, it looks amazing. So that's a pretty complex geometry. Uh, but the topology is really, really good. So um, the, the two things we have now to do are to cut a hole here for the coin to fall in and to fix up this top curve. All right, so let's fix this top part. Oh, we'll basically do the same thing we did before. Let's go into x-ray mode. Um, I shouldn't have deleted, well, uh, we can create a new one. I'm gonna create a new circle. Um, well, let's go put our uh, cursor in the center with shift C, create a new circle and scale it till it's about the inner diameter of our gumball machine. And that's good. And then we'll use that as reference as we in edit mode with vertex select, move these until they're along that curve. All right, and so now we've fixed that. Um, and, you know, I'll leave the circle in case we need it later. I'll just turn off reference layer. And the final thing we have to do is just create that little coin slot uh, where the coins can fall in. So if we look at this, it looks like there's a little cut and just a gap that goes straight down. This back piece we'll probably just do with texture. So I just need to make that gap and, and then we're good. I might make this video a little bit longer because I also want to make this piece before we move on. So let's get that gap in there and kind of um, hurry because we want to get to that part. And I think the easiest way to do this will be just to go into face mode, select, um, I guess I'll just manually do it because we're in x-ray mode, select these ones, that should be fine. Go to front view, extrude, right click to cancel, grab, and then hit Z to pull it straight down. Scale on Z to make it flat. And let's actually undo that. Go back to median point. There we go. And I'm going to delete these faces because they don't need to be there. You're not going to see them in the render. And it should be a hole there because the coin's going to just fall through anyways. Let's go back into solid mode, turn off x-ray. And I think the only thing we need to do now is put an edge loop here to tighten that up. And there we go, we have our coin slot. That's pretty much perfect. Um, so let's really quickly hammer out the uh, butterfly crank handle thing for this. All right, so to create this, uh, basically uh, we wanna create like this little cylinder and then extrude these kind of wings off of it. Obviously we're gonna be using subdivision surfacing as we usually do. So let's get busy. Um, I'm gonna go here and just create our um, go into uh, the edit mode and choose vertex mode. And I'm going to put my cursor here, cursor to select. All right, sorry if you experienced a little bit of uh, a jump cut there. Um, you did because I'm recording this, but uh, the drive that I'm recording to actually ran out of space. Well, it got down to one gigabyte and my computer warned me that you can't record on this drive anymore. So now that that's fixed, <laughs> I knew I should have put this part in the next video, but since we already started and the previous recording just abruptly cut off, I'm going to finish what I started. So um, what we were doing is the cursor was somewhere. I selected this vertice. I moved my cursor to that. 
And then we get hit tab to get out of edit mode. Uh, I'm going to go to hit one to go to front view. I'm going to add a circle here. Um, and we're going to add a octagon. So we'll just do eight points. Go into edit mode, rotate on X 90 degrees so that it's facing us. And we're going to scale it down until it's about there. And we want to make the two wings that come off of it. And if you remember last time we rotated by 22.5, so we'll do that again. And the reason why, I'll just show you again in case you forgot. Um, I want this part to be flat right there so we can extrude a, a wing out of it. Um, and if we were to rotate this by one eighth, nothing would happen. So we have to rotate it by half, which if we do 360 divided by 16 instead of eighths, we get 22.5. So rotate 20 well, with this focused, ro rotate 22.5. And there we go. I don't want these to be perfectly circled, though. I'm going to make this just a tiny bit bigger. So scale on Z just a little bit bigger like that. And that'll be fine. So now I'm going to go select everything, go to front view, extrude out on Y. And we're going to scale it in just a tiny bit. We're going to select everything and we'll, we'll just go into object mode, shade smooth. Of course, we're going to add a subdivision surface to this. Uh, we'll do two levels. Um, we will go and put an extra edge loop here and we'll just go ahead and set up our mirror modifier from the get go. So we'll delete this half. Let's go put a mirror modifier above everything else. Turn on clipping. Um, and so now what we want to do is basically extrude the wings for this. Well, we want to do a couple things. Let's let's just do the uh, no. We'll do this first. So I'm going to take this vertice, this vertice, put my cursor there. Make sure I'm still in 3D cursor scaling mode. Select this. And I'm going to extrude and then scale in just a little bit. And that way it kind of has like this little, you know, rounding effect at the edge. And we'll do the same thing for the front. So we'll um, put our cursor between those two, select this, extrude, scale in a bit, and we'll scale in again. And then we'll scale in all the way. So scale zero. We could probably bring this one out just a little bit. And so now we just need to go to face mode, check this face. I'm going to hit extrude, then right click to let go, grab on X and bring it out. And let's see how far should we go. We should basically go till it's just a little bit past the circular area. So all the way to about there. Um, we want to add an edge loop on the back so it's nice and straight. And probably on the front as well. Yeah. All right. And then yeah, these are flats. So we want to bring an edge loop out to there and then an edge loop to here where it kind of I'll leave a little bit of a curve there and then I'm going to put two edge loops there. Go to top view, turn on X-ray, go into vertex mode, deselect everything, grab these two, bring them forward on Y to kind of create that uh, butterfly effect scale. Well, let's go back to median point scale on X to make them a little bit wider, grab on X, pull them over a little bit. And I think that's pretty good. Let's exaggerate it a little bit more. And maybe uh, I made them deliberately a little bit taller, but actually I'm kind of regretting that now. So let's um, go into x-ray mode and just select all of this and just scale it down just a tiny bit. And I think, yeah, so this edge should go over there like that, as well as this one to kind of smoothen that curve out. I still want it to be a little bit hard. Um, can we see this from another angle? Yeah, there's like a little bit of a hard edge, but it's not, um, it's not a corner really. So I'm not sure how I want to deal with this because I want it to be smooth, but not a corner. I guess, yeah, that looks pretty good. And actually, I, I think it should just be, whoops. Um, should just be flat, I think. So let's grab these, 
on X. So, you know, it, it goes straight as it rounds out. Yeah, I like that because it's, you can still see a little bit of a, a distinction, but it's not, um, it's not a sharp corner. So the only thing that I see as a problem right now is because when you do the mirror, you have this extra edge loop, like there isn't an edge loop here, right? But when you put an edge loop there, it kind of flattens this out because we're doing the mirror. These top sections have an extra edge loop. So it kind of flattens out the top and bottom. So let's just select these vertices um, and scale to round that out a bit. And this part could probably also be uh, fixed up a bit. So let's just grab this. Whoops. Um, yeah, I'll just rotate. I'm going to just kind of eyeball this. So we want to go 3D cursor, rotate like that. Same thing with this one. Okay, and then I'm just going to scale these out a little bit as well. Scale without Y. So I'm going to turn off Y with a shift um, Y. And then probably the same thing for this as well. Scale just on Z. All right, I feel like that fits a little bit better. Um, and then so we will call this, is this what we have? Yeah, so we'll call this the um, crank. And we'll use the same material as the faceplate for now. Because, I mean, it's basically the same material. We'll texture it all separately and stuff. But uh, for now, we have that. And this actually belongs in the gumball machine collection. So now bring everything back and we are in good shape. So this video is a little bit longer because um, I wanted to get this crank in there um, and then recording randomly ended. So I had to do this addendum. So this, this is probably 37 minute video. Uh, so I'm gonna call it here. Um, stay tuned for the next episode where we start to create the glass and maybe even we'll be lucky enough to create the top in the next episode. So remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff and uh, see you.